why are these grasslands important? Well, they provide a number of services that are important to us, you know. They capture carbon from the air and fix it down in their roots, helping to clean our air, right? And they help absorb nutrients uh, from water that's running across our landscape into our streams so that the streams stay clean. And uh, they actually even change the way that water passes through the soil. So the perennial grasses can promote deeper penetration of water into the soil. So there's a number of important roles that they play in the ecosystem. Grasslands are a big component of our landscape here in Livermore that largely goes um, overlooked or misunderstood. Grasslands make up today about 25% of California's land cover, but only 1% of that is our native vegetation. It's just been this huge change in California's land cover. Our historic grasslands have been almost completely re replaced with invasive species, and this is a huge challenge to restoration of the native biodiversity. So, um, we've been doing research up here in Sycamore Grove on how we can control some of those invasive species and hopefully create a window of opportunity to reintroduce natives. It's something that's not very well understood. So before we go and do things on a large scale, we've set up uh, small scale experimental plots. Um, if you'd like, at some point in the program, we can take a short walk up the trail here and look at some of the test plots where we've been doing, using uh, really carefully timed mowing to try to reduce Medusa head get grass, which is a, one of the particularly problematic invasive species. And it's actually been very successful. We've had about uh, 65 to 80% um, reduction in most of those plots. And what we're doing now is trying to reintroduce native plants in those and see how well they tolerate the mowing and how well they keep out the Medusa head grass. So sort of, since we've seen that start to work a little bit, we're gonna start scaling up. And that's what we're gonna work on today. Um, we came in last night, um, mowed this small area here, and um, sort of green burned some of the seedlings that were coming up, mostly these invasive species, and we'll be planting uh, some of the natives. But we took a sample of grasses and perennial wildflower species. The wildflowers make up a lot of the diversity in a grassland, and we want to include them in our planting. Um, and we had a, a nursery, a local nursery, grow out seeds that were collected from, from within the park. And that's what we'll be planting today. And one of the common themes you'll, you'll see in all these plants, they're all perennials, meaning that they live many years. And so this is something that will give them a competitive advantage over these annual weeds when we start mowing these plots. They can handle having their top cut off um, and regrow, whereas the annuals have to invest all this energy in making seeds. And when we cut their tops off, a lot of times they won't be able to grow. So these plots, after we plant here, we'll probably get a, a flush of weeds over the winter, and you guys will be like, where did our native plants go? <laughs> and then in late May, we're gonna come back in and mow over it, and you guys will be like, they mowed the plants! <laughs> but what we're, what we're actually trying to target is so seed well. <laughs> inputs of the annual, the annual plants, and just remember when you see that, that these perennial plants can actually handle having their tops uh, grown off after they've had a winter to get their roots down. So we're gonna squeeze our little seedling out of the tube. In some cases, it's gonna come out sort of looking like this. It'll be like roots all pressed together, soil held together, leaves sticking off, even after you take it out of the tube. And then you wanna, so you wanna shake a little bit of that soil off the bottom and let the roots spread out a little bit. We'll show you how to do that. And then we'll put this into this hole. Now, when I bury that little seedling plug in here, do I want it to be like, like that? Anybody have any ideas about that? No. No, no that's too deep. So, do I want to do it like? <laughs> no. That? No. No, because then, if we do it like this, the, the leaves will probably rot if they get buried. Okay, if we have soil pressed all around the leaves, they, they, they'll probably rot. If we do it like this, the little roots up here will get dried out and probably won't make it. So what we want to do is you want to try to plant it so that the soil surface of your plug is right about at the soil surface of the ground. That's a happy plug. That's a happy plug there. And 
And then what we want to do is firm the dirt around it. We don't want its roots hanging out in pockets of air down there. So we're going to push from the sides and try to squeeze that in. There should be a little bit of loose dirt around each hole. If we need more dirt, we can use spades to scrape up a little bit of dirt to pack in there. And, uh, and then hopefully our seedlings will be, will be off to a good start. So you want to take your plug and you're going to first have to loosen, loosen it a little bit. So don't be shy. You can squeeze these a little bit. You're not going to damage the plant, but you are going to loosen that soil. You want to try not to lose your soil. It might come off the roots of the plants, but you want to at least try to keep it in the tube if you can or in your hand. Just sort of shake it loose. You don't want to pull the top off. If it doesn't come readily, then squeeze it some more. Now I sort of shake it like that to get the dirt to come off in the tube. And then we have a little native grass seed, and it's ready to go in the ground. Um, if your hole looks too deep for the roots that you have, push a little bit of dirt in. If you, if you need to, scrape some in with, your, with a spade. And then you can set that guy in there, hold it at about the level that you want it to be planted at, and pour the rest of your dirt in there around it. Tuck it in. Get some of this loose dirt from around the sides. And then when you're done, you start kind of start from the outside and really push it down in there because you want to make sure those roots are pressed against the dirt. You, want, you don't want them to be hanging in pockets of air. Now, we, sh we made that picture of planting too deep and too high. If anything, air a little bit on the side of too high because these will settle down. So notice this is actually a little bit above the soil surface. We just don't want to bury it like that or have like the uh, root crown sticking out above the soil. <laughs> These, um, these are California goldenrod and they were planted in one size larger than the other, so they're, they're actually quite large. And if you have to, you can break those roots up and take some of the soil out of there. These are, this is a real pretty wildflower. It's called goldenrod and it'll spread out and form sort of a mat and uh, blooms late in the summer with these little clusters of yellow flowers. It's actually a really important resource to a lot of insects out here, like the buckeye butterfly. Oh, I believe in what they're doing mm -hmm. and the restoration. She's doing great. Uh, she's, I love working She's coming outdoors. out tonight. She thought about coming out to the program. Uh, before we wrap things up, I just wanted to uh, say thank you and that we're really grateful to have the support from the Illinois State Academy of Science, the British Ecological Society, and now the, the Together Green uh, program, which is uh, sort of a collaboration between the Audubon Society and Toyota. Um, you know, they're providing support to get these plants out here and uh, accommodate these volunteer projects. And of course, we couldn't do this at all without the help of all these people in the community who come out here and dedicate their time and hands to the project.